Welcome back to Sustainability Matters. My name is Nicole Mohan and I'm RSM's National Sustainability Lead. With rapid movement in the International Sustainability Standards Boards, ISSB, and the IFRS Sustainability Disclosure Standards over the last few months, it looks like a mandatory reporting framework may be on its way in Australia. My name is Elizabeth Platz and I'm an Assistant Manager in ESG Services. As there's a lot to cover within this topic, we'll be recording two short videos on the background of the IWSB and the IFRS Sustainability Disclosure Standards and what all of this means for you. The ISSB is an independent body that is responsible for developing and improving the IFRS Sustainability Disclosure Standards. In March 2022, the ISSB published two draft exposure standards for consultation, which once finalised will form a comprehensive global baseline of sustainability disclosures designed to meet the information needs of investors. The IFRS draft exposure standards are named S1 and S2, easy to remember, and requires a company to disclose information that enables investors to assess the effect of significant sustainability-related risks and opportunities on its enterprise value, and to also establish disclosure requirements specific to cl climate-related risks and opportunities. S1 sets out the core content for a complete set of sustainability-related financial disclosures. The disclosures focus on sustainability-related risks and opportunities arising from dependencies and impacts on resources and relationship that an entity maintains. Some key points in relation to S1 are that it takes into consideration a company's governance, strategy and risk management, as well as the metrics and targets used to measure, monitor and manage sustainability-related risk. It appeals to primary users of general purpose financial reporting, it emphasises the need for consistency between financial statements and sustainability disclosures and to also be published at the same time. And it also requires disclosure of information across the full value chain, which is defined by the standard as the full range of activities, resources and relationships related to a company's business model and the external environment in which they operate. So, on to S2. S2 also requires companies to centre disclosures with the consideration of governance, strategy and risk management of its business, and also the metrics and targets used to measure, monitor and manage its significant climate-related risks and opportunities. Features of S2 include the identification of climate-related risks, both physical risk and transition risks. Physical risks cover acute and chronic risks associated with climate change more broadly. This can include increased severity of extreme weather events, so your flooding and droughts, or longer term shifts in climate patterns. Transition risks are associated with the transition to a lower carbon economy and include risks arising from regulatory or policy changes. There are also opportuni opportunities associated with each of these. S2 also requires explanations on how risks have and will impact a company's financial position. And the standard also incorporates industry-based metrics from other frameworks, such as the Task Force on Climate-Related Financial Disclosures, TCFD for short, or the SASB standards. And it also sets out disclosures relating to transition planning, climate resilience, and scope one, two, and three emissions. So, what's the current progress of these standards? Well, in March 2023, the IWSB declared that the exposure drafts were close to issuance. The IWSB held a public meeting and agreed on the final content for the standards, and a balloting process will then be completed, which involves drafting, reviewing, and approving the standards, with an aim to finalise the standards by June 2023. So, what does this mean for you? Tune in to our next video, episode 2.2, on where we will provide tips on how you can be best prepared. Thank you for joining us today. As always, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us. Thank you and see you next time.